Good afternoon, everybody from Paladin Stadium. Welcome to Furman Football Mondays presented by Ingles and Bon Secor. I'm Dan Scott along with head coach Clay Hendricks. Our second week of uh, getting into the inner workings of Furman Football. And, hey, we've got a game to actually talk about, one in the past and one coming up. Furman opened the spring 2021 season with a 35-7 victory over Western Carolina on Saturday here at Paladin Stadium and now turn their attention to a first road game of the spring at VMI coming up this Saturday. Before we talk with Coach Hendricks, uh, just one basketball note in case you're tuning in and you have not heard, tonight's basketball game at Timmins Arena scheduled with VMI has been canceled because VMI has once again found themselves in COVID protocol. So no basketball game on campus today. Furman will return to action on Wednesday here at Timmins Arena hosting the Citadel at 7 p.m. Coach, that's about the only bad news that we've had to talk about uh, over the last uh, 48 to uh, 72 hours. That was a heck of a performance by your football team, and I know a long time coming. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, really pleased with you know how our kids played, really, in, in, in most phases of the game, and uh, thought our staff did an incredible job preparing our team. Uh, it was a tough preparation, long time coming. But had a beautiful day, and, and again, I was really pleased how we played. Let's take a look uh, at our uh, game summary graphic just to give our fans a little bit of an update as to, to uh, what it looked like. Here we go. 35-7 the final. Uh, really blew things open with that big second quarter. First time in 448 days your team had played a football game, and uh, you, you had more than a yard per day that you had to wait in offense, 533 yards, 33 first downs. Western Carolina didn't break the 100-yard mark until I think their final possession of the game. It's the second fewest yards you've allowed an opponent in the history of Powelton Stadium. First was point in the final game last year. Complete performance, and of course, Devin wins 2,000 yards. That's a pretty good mark to get for that young man. Yeah, it's a great, great mark for him to get, and I think he'd be the first one to tell you he's had a lot of help, and certainly he's got a lot of football still ahead of him. And, uh, but no, I, I think it all started with how we played defensively. That set the tone for the whole for the whole day, and obviously we put them in a bad spot to start the game, but uh, really pleased with how they responded. I, I, I think maybe that's been the group that's probably not been talked about very much, but I've had high expectations for them. And, you know, certainly the challenges will get greater as we go forward, but uh, looking forward to watch them. You know, continue to improve. So it's only one weekend, but we do give you a chance to see what the uh, standings look like. Uh, and Furman will be right at the top of that standings list when it pops up on your screen. Uh, after one week, Furman, Wofford, and ETSU all get wins. Sanford, Mercer, and Western Carolina don't. And right there in the middle, the teams that have yet to play a game. So uh, you got a chance to go wire to wire now, Coach. <laughs> well, I mean, that's our goal. Just go 1-0 that week and uh, that's all we're trying to do this week and uh, I think we've learned through all this this COVID uh, time that uh, just take it day by day so we're just trying to go out there today on Monday and have a have a great day of preparation and um, you know do what we can there's a lot of things we need to improve upon really are and uh, which it, which is a good thing you know to, to play pretty well yet there's clearly some things that we've got to do better and we'll need to and uh We'll start, we'll st we started work on those yesterday, but really, really pour into it today. I, I've asked you this question before, but for the benefit of our fans watching, there, there's an old football axiom that says that a football team will make uh, at, at times its largest improvement between game one and game two because you've finally played somebody in a, in a game situation, you hit somebody other than your own color jersey. D do you follow that line of thinking that you'll that you you should make significant improvement from week one to week two? Well, I. I, I think, you you know, we're always trying to make improvement. I, I think probably this year, maybe even more so, uh, I think there's really two ways to look at it. you got a lot of guys that really played their first game ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly I think they'll be a little more relaxed, a little more at ease, uh, you know, haven't, haven't been in that situation before. But uh, I, I think this year, just because the the amount of link between games, uh, you hope you see that. Um, and I, I do think a lot of things we we didn't do well are all fixable things. And uh, but uh, you know the, I'm I'm certainly hoping we can 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 show some great improvement this coming week. 
with the, uh, the, the, the two interceptions early, and there were a couple of times that, that David Cobb said he thought that it, it, it looked like it, it was taking our offense and maybe the passing game a little bit of time to get into the, to accustomed to the speed of the game going against a, a live opponent for the first time. If that's the case, you really settled in good. Well, we did. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I made it pretty clear we had, you know, we've done a lot of live action throughout you know, throughout the preseason, had not tackled very much, you know. I think probably one of the biggest challenges you see, you know, you play an opponent who did play three games in the fall, so mm -hmm. we had some video, you know, with them. But, you know, first games are always, I think sometimes it's, you, you don't need to put too much stock in first games because of the improvements you're talking about. Uh, you know, they changed a few things, obviously, which I thought they would. We, we changed a few things. Right. And I think sometimes it's, it's adjusted maybe a little bit to what they're, what they're, uh, what they're giving you. And, you know, and I, I think the very first one, you know, Ham just made a bad decision, you know, and as I said, when, you know, you play that position, it, it shows, you know, when you make a bad decision. And, you know, the the other one was, uh, you know, wasn't his best throw, but probably shouldn't have been an interception. Had a chance really to be a completion. And, uh, you know, you just try to, again, dress those things, try to, try to get a little better, you know, um, each week. And I have no doubt he'll, uh, he'll come back ready to go this week. While you were talking, fans saw uh, a, a, a package of our Ingles highlights from the game, and uh, we, we got a chance to see a, a little bit of, of everything there. You were dominant in the running game. We talked about the total yards, 533 yards, and you and I were sitting here right before we went live. You had 10 different guys carry the football, nine different guys catch the football on Saturday. Uh, you start getting into that kind of depth, that means you're having a good day. You know, it's always great when you get get a chance to get a bunch of kids in the game. I think we played three offensive lines in the game. Um, you know, and we did run the football well. I, I was really pleased how physical we were. Um, you know, it's, it obviously starts with those guys up front. And, you know, I think that carries over to the defensive side of the ball. And I, I, you know, I felt like all along we had a chance on both sides of the football to be, be a pretty solid group up front. And uh, I think that was obvious Saturday, you know, that we have a chance to be that. And, uh Again, it's just can we continue to keep improving. Well, you talk about the guys up front. In the next segment, we're going to be talking with one of those young men. Evan Jumper will be our guest. Uh, before we do that, though, let's take a look at our Bon Secours catch of the game. Or maybe we should call this the Bon Secours replay of the game because initially this play was ruled an incompletion, but upon review, they changed it, and rightly so. How about that concentration by Wayne Anderson, Jr.? Well, it's, it's pretty darn good. I actually was standing right over there by that, and, and to be honest with you, I, I I didn't know it was it was close. I thought his foot was going to come in bounds, come down in bounds, and then when he got hit, I wasn't sure if he was able to get it down, you know, without that happening. But certainly, it was a big play, you know, in the game. Kept that drive going, and you know, Wayne's made a lot of big plays, mm -hmm. a lot of big catches, and. Uh, particularly in a situation when you know you're going to take a pretty good hit. Yeah, two receivers right there. Did somebody run the wrong pattern? Was there supposed to be that kind of congestion there? Because it looked like it allowed the, the defensive guy to come off of one player and then make that it, hit on the wing. And, and, you know, probably could, probably could have got the ball to him a little sooner. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, when you get to that point. But certainly I was glad that uh, – that Wayne, Wayne came up with that catch. Yeah, it was a big play and a scoring drive. That's our Bon Secours catch of the game. We'll take a break and come back. Evan Jumper will join in the hot seat when we come back on this Furman Football Monday brought to you by Ingles and Bon Secours. We'll do that in just a moment. Gotta get over there. Pardon me. So sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Pardon me. Oh, sorry about your foot. No. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh. Oh. Ingles, your place for food and football at home. Now your doorbell is your dinner bell. A big bow box delivery from Bojangles will feed the whole family. Just tap your app for eight pieces of chicken. Biscuits, fixins, and tea. It's bow time. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days. 
as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. It is Furman Football Monday from the uh, press box overlooking Paladin Stadium. And, hey, give the uh, the weatherman a little credit. They said that the uh, rain was going to move out and we'd see some sunshine this afternoon. And lo and behold, that's what we've got. It's good to see. It was a great day for football on Saturday, weather-wise, and, of course, the way things turned out for the Paladins with the 35-7 win over Western Carolina. And uh, we're going to... Do something that I know the guys up front wish we'd do more often, and, and that's give – I probably shouldn't call a young college athlete a big ugly, but that's kind of the, <laughs> kind of the name for the, uh, the offensive lineman. But Evan Jumper, starting center, the sophomore from Myrtle Beach, is uh, joining us here on this segment. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great, especially we, after a victory. Imagine we can call you whatever we want as long as you keep winning, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Tell me about uh, that game from your perspective. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It's, it was uh, it had been a really long time uh, since we played, and it was just fun to just mash on someone else that you know is in our defense. Uh, I, I kept telling our linebackers how sick I was of like hitting them in practice, and uh, it was just great to be back on the field. I guess the question is, were they sick of you hitting them in uh, practice? I'm sure they were too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told Hunter I laughed when he told me you were going to be the guest, the, the uh, uh, fine. Uh, legendary longtime SID here, Hunter Reed. That, oh, I said, great, we're going to get the perspective of somebody who looks at the world upside down between his legs. <laughs> yes. And, which is how you spend most of your yes. time, right? Yes, it is. Uh, got to get the snap back to him. So Did you always want to be a center? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I played center in high school, and I've always enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun just to grind on people. So um, it's great. And nothing happens until you're ready for it to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. Every, every play starts with the center. Yeah, there are only there are only two players who are guaranteed most of the time anyway to have their hands on the ball every single play, and that's this guy and the quarterback. So that's how important it is. We get a little bit of a, a look at some of uh, some of you as, as well as your teammates in action here on, on the screen. We're looking at some pass protection right now, uh, and and how well you guys protected uh, Ham Sisson during the game. But you also uh, ground out, and I mean really grounded out. Uh, on the ground, running for a total of 320 yards in the game. And look there, there's a there's an Evan Jumper touchdown <laughs> celebration after after the uh, score by uh, Devin Wynn. Or, I'm sorry, by Dominic Roberto. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I love our running backs. They run hard, and uh, we just try to do the best we can for them. And, and obviously, we love to celebrate. Love to celebrate big plays. So. All right. Uh, one thing we like to do when we get uh, to talk to some of our student athletes is, is play five questions. So it's time for us to venture down Ingles Aisle Five. It is five questions with Evan Jumper. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Number one, who is the best player that you played against in high school? And quit looking at my note sheet. It takes <laughs> the fun away if you try to get um, the questions in, ahead of time. I would maybe say uh, Xavier Thomas. Uh, he plays at Clemson now. He played at Wilson High School. Or uh, maybe maybe Demonte Capehart, uh, he plays at Clemson as well. Okay, a couple of, a couple of pretty recognizable yeah, names there. For sure. Question number two, and, and with Clay Hendricks watching in the wings, who is the most competitive coach on your staff? Oof. That's tough. Um, I, I don't know. I, maybe maybe Coach Hendricks or maybe uh, Coach Sims or actually. Actually, Coach Duke, I think, is the most competitive really? on our staff. He gets fired up in practice. 
And, and you're talking about just what you see in practice, because I've heard some you know legendary stories about George Quarles and his competition on the golf course. Uh, but you're yeah, talking that's, you're that's talking about practice, right? Oh yeah, just talking about practice. Okay, just I got you. So 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 Coach Duke. Oh yeah, he gets fired up. All right. Uh, question number three: If you had an opportunity to to take a mulligan, a do over on something in your career, what would it be? Um, I would say I wish we could do over. Um, Probably just the Wofford game last year. I wish we could have just completely done over that game, and, and me included, uh, like my performance in that game. I just wish we could have completely uh, done that over and just, you know, ran it back that season. But. Boy, that game game started so well too, didn't it? Yes, it did, and then it finished. <laughs> yeah, we won't we finished. won't talk about the finish. <laughs> finish so we'll talk about the start. <laughs> Question number four: What hidden talent do you have that uh, maybe nobody or very few people know about? Uh. Man, I, I don't know. Uh, I can long snap. <laughs> I guess that's something. I guess some people don't know that. Uh, no, nothing off the football field. You don't play an instrument. You, you don't sing. You don't no, dance. Not really. you, you, no, no, nothing. I'm just a football player. It's all, it's all football related. <laughs> yes, okay. Hey, you, you know what? <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, question number five. How does it feel to block for a 2,000-yard rusher? Man, it feels great. It feels great. I um I love blocking for Devin. You know, I'm I'm so confident in his ability. I know he's confident in us, and uh, I love the relationship that he has with all of us. He you know comes to the sideline and uh, challenges us to do better, and we challenge him. And um, it's just a really great relationship we have. Getting a chance to look at some of your your work uh, with Devin Wynn there uh, as he uh, scores a touchdown, uh, and again he he went over the 2,000 yard mark on Saturday. Just the 13th Furman player running back ever to eclipse 2,000 yards, and he still has seven games to go, we hope, mm -hmm. at least seven games to go in this football season. All right, you get a bonus question. Okay. Mostly it's, it's usually five questions. You get a bonus six question. Because you're from Myrtle Beach, yes, sir. All right, which is the, the Redneck Riviera, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the tourist capital of, of the South, all yes. right? What's the best restaurant in Myrtle Beach, though not the tourist restaurant, but that you locals go to mm. that you know is not going to be overly populated by people who are just coming in for a week or 10 days or whatever? Um, I would either say uh, Mrs. Fish. Mrs. Fish is one of my favorites, and uh, also the Chesapeake House. I love the Chesapeake House, and uh, I used to work there, so it's a great I know it's a great place. It's great food. And, uh, also yeah. a seafood restaurant? Yes, yes. Okay. It's, it's awesome. Right it's, there on the beach? That would yeah. make sense. All right, little, uh, as we get set to wrap it up here, a little uh, uh, advanced scouting report on, on VMI. What can you tell us? Um, well, to be honest, since they didn't really play in the fall, uh, I don't think it's it's uh, might be kind of a challenge to uh, get get prepared for them. But um, they do a lot of like different things defensively, and uh, I'm sure our coaching staff will have us ready in one way or another. So, Bottom yeah. line is you're still in, in kind of that mode where you just have to take care of what, uh, of what you do well yeah. and let the chips fall, right? Yep. Yep, I, I know they'll have us ready, uh, you know, with whatever they do, and we'll just flow with it and roll. All right, Evan, thank you, man. We All appreciate right. it. Yes, sir. Thank Good you. stuff. That is Evan Jumper, the uh, sophomore center from Myrtle Beach. This is Furman Football Monday, brought to you by Ingles and Bon Secour, and we'll be back. Coach Clay Hendricks will rejoin us in just a moment. Stay with us. This is where it starts. Where your story begins. This is the trail you blaze yourself. And step by step, you get stronger, faster, better. This is where it starts. How will you finish? Angles, we're with you every step of the way. Because of this, we built Ford Super Duty to be our most capable heavy duty pickup. Because of this, we gave the all-new 2021 F-150 an available 12-inch touchscreen. Because of this, we built Ranger with a terrain management system. And because Ford trucks are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. Don't miss the chance to get a 2020 F-150 with up to 10,531 in total savings at your Carolina Ford dealer. We are a team. We are a unit. We are a family. No, literally, we are a suburban family of football fans. That's our neighbor. Hi, Bob. 
And that's the inflatable screen we forgot to properly secure. Pepsi, made for football. Watch it. At Ingalls, we know the ever-present struggle of, what am I going to make for dinner this week? That's why we started the Ingalls Table. It's a website that brings the best chefs and food experts right into your kitchen. You can sort through hundreds of recipes for every occasion, watch how-to videos, and print shopping lists to take to the store. It's all waiting for you at ingles-markets.com. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. Welcome back to Furman Football Mondays, presented by Ingles and Bon Secor. I'm Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. Clay Hendricks is back with us. Let's take a look at Furman's remaining schedule coming up this Saturday, the first road game of the spring at VMI, and then back here the following week versus Sanford. You can see the rest of your schedule on the screen there uh, all the way through the regular season finale with Wofford on April the 17th. And uh, the full league schedule coming up this week besides uh, the Furman and VMI game will be popping up here for, here for you in, in just a moment. ETSU, I believe, is the team that has the bye this week. And uh, you've got Wofford at Chattanooga and the Citadel at Mercer as the other games in the league. First road trip coming up. First time to get your team uh, out of here, uh, so to speak, and uh, um, test them out on somebody else's home turf. Yeah, you know, I uh, I certainly love playing at home, but I don't know, I've always enjoyed road trips. You know, it's something about when it's just you and your guys and, you know, nobody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know, maybe the, the – the bond is sometimes a little greater when you got got less people there. I, I don't know, but uh, and then you know the COVID has made the trip a little interesting too. You know, there's a few things you got to do a little different. So, uh, Coach Mazza, our ops guy, has been handling that, but uh, we're uh, we're ready to go. By the way, if you'd like to submit some questions on uh, Facebook Live or on YouTube, you can do so now, and we'll try to get to some of those before this final segment ends uh, with Coach Hendricks. Uh, you know, I was actually going to go down that road with the uh, the fact that, that COVID has, has made traveling uh, significantly different. Now, what, what kind of uh, changes will this make in, in what your normal routine would be? Well, I think just the, the traveling party probably changes a little bit, just the size of, you know, less less kids on a bus or less people on a bus. Um, you know, even this, this past weekend, you know, we, we did the way we did pregame meal. We changed it a little bit, our mm-hmm. Friday night meal. We staggered it, much like some stuff we've done with the locker room. So, you know, I don't know. Our kids handled it extremely well uh, this past week, and uh, – I, I don't think it'll be that that big. You know, th- this it'll be that different. This year's just been so different. Uh, that they, they've been good at just kind of rolling with the flow with whatever we have to change and and get done. We have a schedule for them, and uh, I don't I don't anticipate any issues. Say hello to uh, James Mooney, uh, Martha Crocker, Dolgy, and Tate Waters, who all are offering up their congratulations to both you and, and Evan, who was with us earlier for. A fantastic game on on Saturday. Um, I asked Evan a little bit about the the preliminary scouting report on VMI, and, and he made a great point. You know, they didn't play in the fall. Uh, obviously, you didn't play in the fall. So when you're starting to put this together, you got to go all the way back, I guess, to 2019 tape, right? Well, you do. And and what makes it even more interesting is they didn't play last week. Yeah. Because Chattanooga can't cancel the game, and uh, so you you know, to be honest with you, you would like to have some some video on them from the first game. So. We don't have anything on them from since, I guess, November of, of 2019. And, uh, you know, now I guess the flip side is that they haven't played. We've played a game. So, I, I mean, I think, you you know, we talked about statistics last week. You, you can kind of make statistics work however you want them to work. But uh, so I think that's what's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, they have a, you know, preseason player of the year on, on, on offense as a quarterback. And, um, you know, their entire offense is built around him. He's been a heck of a player mm-hmm. for them. Great career. Uh, they're a little unique defensively. Uh, do, do quite a quite a number of things, and um, you know, and we're we're a little different too. So there's a little chess game involved there, and uh, you know, we'll just plan and uh, prepare as best we can, and uh, we'll have to make some adjustments, uh, just like you do about every week. Well, one of the things that we know for sure, statistics can lie sometimes. Sometimes they tell you pretty much what you need to know. And as we see from the tail of the tape from VMI in 2019, 286 and a half yards 
throwing the football per game. That's what they're going to do with Reese Udensi. They're going to throw it, and they're going to throw it a lot. They are, but, you know, they want to run the football for a team that throws it as much as they have. You know, they they still rush for, you know, 120 yards a game. And, you know, if you're a, you're a Furman person, you probably don't think that's a lot. But uh, they're going to run it enough to make you honor that part of it. You know, had a had a really good running back, had an all-conference running back before. I think they really like the guy they have now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're going to always take the same plan. We're going to try to – you know, take the run game away from teams and make them one-dimensional. And it's, it's a little easier if all they can do is throw. Uh, but I don't think they want to just throw it. I think they want to do both. And so they can they can certainly challenge challenge our defense in both phases. By the way, we, we got a note. I had asked uh, Evan Jumper what his hidden talent was. And he said he didn't have one. His mother took exception to that. <laughs> she, she dropped us a line and said that uh, Evan's hidden talent is eating. Yeah. And, and I think that's – well, I, you know, I wouldn't even call that a hidden talent for most offensive linemen, would, would you? Probably not for most. You're, you're exactly right. <laughs> so I think he does enjoy his he, – he, like most of those guys, enjoys that aspect of it. A uh, question that's been submitted, and, and I think this is a legitimate question, especially with the news of VMI's basketball uh, COVID issues causing the cancellation of tonight's basketball game here at Furman, do you expect that to have any ramifications with your game as far as their COVID protocols coming up on Saturday? Well, I, I really don't. I actually, you know, Coach Walkenheim at the VMI is actually a pretty good friend of mine, and we swapped some texts, and, you know, I got something from him yesterday. Felt like they were, everything was good to go, and uh, I knew, I, I had heard, like most, I think they had had some issues mainly within the school mm-hmm. uh, going forward, so I, I don't, uh, I, I don't know anything now that makes me think it will. Uh, you know, we're just like everybody else. We'll have to test on Wednesday. And and uh, so, again, it goes back to that take it day by day and control what you can control. And, you know, I just tried to certainly continue to impress upon our kids just doing the things that gave us a chance to play Saturday. And uh, that that's just how we've approached it. Another question has been submitted. I said one of these days I need to ask the coaches this. I guess today's one of those days. Somebody wants to know what your hidden talent is. <laughs> I'm not sure I have one either. I uh, I got a few things I like to do. I got a pretty good memory. Probably sometimes serves me poorly, uh, but uh, I'm, I get sometimes. I, I, like I said, I have pretty good. I have pretty good memory about remembering things. But now, I, now, I don't I know have, that I have a have a hidden talent. I, well, I don't know if it's hidden or not, but I, I have heard some stories about you and Coach Quarles on the golf course. Now, well, the story is we like to play. You mm-hmm. know, I, I'm not sure it goes beyond that. I mean, that's something. You know, when you get to get to our age, uh, we quit playing. You know, noon basketball many years ago. Because uh, we were afraid we would get hurt and it would it would mess up our, our golf opportunities in the spring and summer. But uh, uh, we enjoy playing. There's not a lot of things left that we can compete compete uh, at, and uh, that's one of the things we can kind of we can kind of have a little competition still. I I still like the competition. I like the competition with football, but um, you know I, I have to try to be neutral. Both sides of the ball accuse me of being one sided, but right. uh, but I try to be neutral at practice. But I guess that's one of the few things I could do and still have a chance to compete at something. I got you. We, we got about a minute left. Uh, you came out of the game on Saturday uh, healthy for the most part. Yeah, we really did. I think we'll even have a couple of guys back that maybe weren't fully ready to go last week. Uh, but I, I thought we did. I mean, for a, it was a physical football game, and particularly I think that's a little bit of style we play and. Uh, you know, get a guy like Hugh Ryan who really wasn't cleared until Wednesday to have full full contact. He'd been able to practice, you know, and he played some Saturday mm-hmm. uh, in a limited capacity to so get him back. But now I, th- I think we're in good shape physically, and uh, you know the, the the typical bumps and bruises that you get. But uh, you know, just need to go have a great week of practice. We, we talked about that on, on Saturday's broadcast. After 440 days, I don't think anybody was going to complain about being sore on Sunday morning. And that's that, that's probably a, a fair statement. Uh, and, you know, we we practice late on Mondays just because of some lab schedules that we have in the afternoon. So we won't get them. They, they lifted this morning, and uh, Coach Bernardi said that went great. And um, we'll be out there about 6 o'clock tonight and uh, trying to trying to get some work done. Well, let's, uh, let's get ready to go on the road, and let's get a win in Lexington, Virginia on Saturday, Coach. Thank you, Dan. That'd be great. All right, that is head coach Clay Hendricks. We thank him. We thank Evan Jumper 
for joining us as we uh, wrap up our second episode of uh, Furman Football Monday presented by Ingles and Bon Secours. I'll just remind you that kickoff is 1.30 on Saturday in Lexington, Virginia. Our pregame will begin on ESPN Upstate, our flagship station for radio at noon with David Cobb and Marcus McMorris and myself. Tom Van Hoy will be staying back to do the Wofford basketball game in Spartanburg. That is a 7 o'clock tip-off that same evening. For Coach Clay Hendricks, for all of us here at Furman University, thank you for tuning in. I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. <laughs>